WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury claimed a controversial split decision victory over former UFC fighter Francis Ngannou in Saudi Arabia. The 37-year-old Ngannou was making his professional boxing debut, put Fury in the canvas in round three after connecting with a left hook. Ngannou made more money from his boxing match with Tyson Fury than he did from his UFC career. He was paid £10 million pounds for the fight, which well he earned $3.5 million from 14 UFC fights in seven years. Now, after the fight, Talk Sports voice of boxing Adam Cattrall was quick to praise Ngannou following the result. Tyson Fury's had his hand raised via a split decision in Saudi Arabia, but the star of the show by an absolute country mile is Francis Ngannou. He absolutely showed up tonight and showed that he can box. Going into this contest, I said Francis Ngannou has got one opportunity at the big time of boxing. I personally think he's just announced himself. There is an opportunity, if he wants, to maybe have a dance again in the boxing world. Yep, now for more on this, we're joined by a four-time boxing world champion, Carl Froch. Carl, a very good morning, mate. How are you? Morning, Carl. Morning. Morning. I'm not too bad, thank you. Great, Carl. Carl, the, the best way I put it, I, I, I stayed up and watched the fight and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, the, the, the best, I was talking to Andy earlier and I said... If Francis Ngannou had been given that decision, there would have been absolutely no complaints from anybody. Is that fair? I think Tyson Fury's team would have complained, but that would have been about it um, because it was it was um, arguably um, Francis Ngannou's night. I thought he should have had his hand raised. I thought he'd won the fight. It was very close. I've watched it back again and scored it because there's a few people moaning about me saying that Ngannou should have won. And it was close, but I thought Francis Ngannou won. But I can't believe we're having this conversation. Yeah, How yeah. did somebody make his professional debut beat Tyson Fury, the heavyweight champion of the world? Uh, it just sounds ludicrous. How, how far do you think he can he can go in terms of real genuine impact in the division now, Ngannou? Well, listen, based on that performance, it, the sky's the limit because he's only going to improve. He's getting more sparring. He, he just fought Tyson Fury and 99% of the people you speak to thought he'd won. And... Um, he'll get better and better and improve. So why can't he jump in there with Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk? He's, I mean, I'm not going to say jump in there with Usyk and beat the unified heavyweight champion straight away because that would sound ludicrous. But he's bigger, stronger. He's just gone 10 rounds with Tyson Fury and we think he's won. So mm. why can't he jump in there with someone like Usyk? He's probably too big for him. But it's just, it's just mad that we're having this conversation. But he did really well. He, he comes from mixed martial arts background. He had good balance. He had good distance and timing. It was it was counter punching on his back foot against mm -hmm. Tyson Fury, who's usually the counter puncher and the boxer. He boxed really, really well, and that was his professional debut. It's madness. It's scary to think that, Carl. When you, when you put it like that, I want to ask you, Carl, and ask Spencer the same question. Uh, 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 I'm looking at that fight, and everybody, including Tyson Fury, expected him to win that fight very, very comfortably. Now he didn't do it. It kind of looked a little bit visibly shocked to me Fury at the end of the mm. fight now I asked Spencer the question Usyk's in that audience as I said well, a lot of the, the, the top boxers from yesteryear and nowadays would any way shape or form Fury be psychologically damaged moving forward by that fight at the weekend yeah there's a good there's a massive chance that he'll be psychologically damaged because um, to, to, to lose a fight which he, he thinks he's going to win really, really easily. That's a that's a massive that's a massive psychological bang for him because if you think about it, he's gone in there expecting to just win this fight, no problem at all, have a little move around the spa, and he's ended up being in a really competitive boxing match, mm -hmm. and everybody thinks he's lost. So psychologically, that's got to be that's got to be da damaging to you. But he'd probably make an excuse that he's not taking the fight seriously. He didn't do a full training camp. And um, I don't know, there'll be there'll be a few reasons why he's underperformed. Mm. That's got to have done his head in. It's got to have. Carl, there's been some some uh, some talk this morning about the Usyk fight now being in danger because of a cut to Fury. How long, I mean, how long do you have to do you have to leave uh, if you've got a cut around your eye in particular? How long how long have you got to give that to absolutely be confident that it's not going to open up easy? Um, the, to be honest, it depends how bad the cut is. And that one is on his forehead looked superficial. It didn't look like it required, like it needed stitches. I mean, right. I was only watching it on TV. But if you get a bad cut above your eye and it goes through the flesh and into the muscle, then it can take months. Wow. Uh, but if it's just if it's just a superficial flesh wound where they have to close it up with stitches, it can take six weeks and you're fine. But you can't spar, can you? So December 23rd, with a small nick on your forehead, may not be too much of an issue. 
right. but a big cut on your eye. Like you, you're right to ask about the eye, a cut around the eye. You, you would, you would, the fight would be off December twenty right. third, no chance. But yeah. to be honest, I don't think December twenty third is going to happen anyway. Did, didn't Frank Warren allude to the fact that that yeah, fight start might be of the off? year? Yeah, yeah, he, sorry, he, yeah. He, and I think, so, I think, I think Tyson also said they'll look forward to seeing you at the start of the year. Okay, so we, we want to see that fight clearly, whether it's you know just before the turn of the year or a bigger plan before Chris, uh, the new year or after the turn of the year. That's one we want to see. What about Francis and Ganu now moving forward, Carol? I mean, would, would, he, would you like to see him get a chance for perhaps Wilder or AJ? I would do, yeah. But what, listen, if he's going to take boxing seriously now, I mean, he's not he's not got bags of time because he's, he's, what yeah, is he's, he's 37. Mid- yeah, he's, he's, he's old anyway. 37 is not too old, but he's in good shape. He's in good nick. If I was managing him, I was serious about him being a professional fighter. I'd give him one or two more fights at a sort of top 10, top 15 level. Put him, put him in there with someone like, you know, like a Derek Chisora. Yeah. Or even yeah. A, or a Dillian White, that sort of level. Joseph Parker boxed on that bill that night. Joseph Parker looked pretty good there, um, actually. And he's only 31. He might, he might still have a bit of a career ahead of him. At that sort of level, top 10 sort of level. And then have a crack at the big one because he's, that was a 10-rounder against Fury. Yeah. Obviously, pro boxing 12 rounds. And he's not used to doing it. He's not used to... So he needs some training camp. He needs some sparring. Or just roll the dice. And if you can get a big fight with someone like Usyk or Anthony Joshua or the rematch with Ant- or, or the rematch with um, Fury, do that. Big mm. money fight. So that's what is in it. Just made what's he made. You said earlier, 10 million quid. He's just made big money. Why not go straight in there with another couple of big money fights and then retire a hero? Because I tell you what, the public absolutely love this and Garland guy, don't they? Well, t- tell me, Carl, you, you, you mentioned what a positivity it's been for UFC and Ghana. I want to ask you, flip side of the coin, has boxing's reputation been damaged a little bit with the fight at the weekend? Sorry, who's represent? Oh, boxing. Yes. Um, well, it's it's not as bad as the YouTubers, but people compare Tommy Fury and KSI and Logan Paul and, and that clown Jake Paul and to put them in the same breath as, as world champions. They mentioned people like my name, even though I'm retired nine years. And they talk themselves up as if they're professional boxers, and they're not. And it's evident for everybody to see that they're not professional boxers because they can't fight. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ungano, actually, he was a heavyweight mixed martial arts champion, and he's made the crossover to professional boxing, and he did a bloody good job at it, let's be honest. Yeah. He took the heavyweight champion <clears throat> 10 rounds. So I don't think it's done boxing that much harm, no, because a lot of people are saying this, and Ungano actually can fight. I think the only damage it's done is to Tyson Fury. It's, it's, it's a little bit embarrassing for Tyson mm-hmm. Fury, if I'm honest, because he jumped in there with somebody who he's probably not taking too serious. And he said he's going to go and smash him in one or two rounds and, and end it. You don't get paid for overtime and all that nonsense jive talk he was talking. And he's gone in there. He's struggled to find his range. He's got flattened. And then he's, he's had 10 rounds of a, an absolute nightmare with, with Ungarno. And 99% of people think he lost. So I don't think it's doing boxing any harm. No, I just think it's... It looks bad for Tyson Fury, if I'm honest. OK, Carl, brilliant. Really Cheers, appreciate Carl. your views this morning. Thanks for taking the time to join Pleasure. us. Have a great Monday, mate. Now, if you want to hear more uh, from world champ, former world champion Carl Froch, then subscribe to TalkSport Boxing on YouTube and watch the latest episode of The Verdict, where he and George Grove discuss Fury's win and question whether we will see the Gypsy King in the ring ever again.